We're at a point where the current communication and computing infrastructure is approaching its limit. Power consumption, data bandwidth, and speed requirements are all growing exponentially, really. And we honestly need to start thinking about how we'll accommodate it and even future-proof it as far as we can. NTT is already working on what I can only describe as the next version of the internet. And they've asked me to help explain how it works. This won't be as complicated as the how quantum computing works video that I did. Probably. NTT created an initiative back in 2020 in partnership with Intel and Sony called ION, or Innovated Optical and Wireless Network. It's essentially a roadmap for networks and information processing infrastructure to increase speed, bandwidth, and capacity, as well as reduce latency. You know, the things that everybody wants all of the time. And a big focus of this initiative is optics. And what I mean by optics is data transmission by light. And it's not as crazy as it sounds. We actually do a lot of it already. We have been since the 80s and it's usually done with fiber optic cables. Now these cables, in a nutshell, are made up of many smaller optical fibers. These fibers have a cladding to protect and insulate them, then a core usually made up of a super thin glass. At each end, we have a laser that pulses light down the glass super fast to give us binary code made up of bits, on and off being one and zero, and then organized into eight part patterns to give us bytes, and so on to give us the ability to send data. It's the same as how electricity works going down a copper cable. But fiber optics using light are much faster and can go much further without the signal degrading, as well as make it easier to have symmetrical up and down speeds, as in the light can go in both directions using different fibers, and that gives us much faster speeds and much lower latency. Now, a good portion of the backbone of the internet, the infrastructure that connects all of our computers and servers together, is fiber optic cables. In fact, most of the modern submarine cables are fiber optic. The first fiber optic submarine cable was laid back in 1988 connecting Europe and the US. And now there is a web of them connecting all of the continents together and it's what allows for the World Wide Web. The issue we have, and part one of NTT's ION initiative, is upgrading everything, including the last mile, not actually a mile, just a term for the last part of the network that connects the end users to the backbone of the internet, to fiber optics, AKA photonics. So you may have seen ISPs or internet service providers offering fiber optic internet access up to one gigabit per second up and down. I myself actually had this in my apartment here in New York City and it was amazing. Now I say this in past tense because I just recently upgraded the fiber optic internet in my apartment from one gigabit per second to two gigabits per second because I can't help myself. And the technician who installed the upgrade even said that they're getting ready to launch five gigabits per second and even 10 gigabits per second soon. And that's just to say that one gigabit per second is kind of just the beginning for fiber optics. NTT reported in 2019 on a successful experiment where they were able to use optical fiber to transmit at one terabit per second, as in a thousand gigabits per second in a laboratory setting. And then just three months later, we're able to achieve that one terabit per second over a world breaking record of 1,122 kilometers. I want that in my apartment. And this is part of what the internet needs to become an all photonics network, as in using photons or light. And this would increase speed and bandwidth and reduce latency, but also would reduce energy usage by a lot. But there's more to the plan. The next part of this ION initiative is taking those photonics and not just using them to connect our computers to the internet and to each other, but then also connect the components inside our computers to each other. So you see just how our computers are connected to one another and to servers over the internet and the using of copper and electronics for that needs to change. Inside your computer, there are a number of key components that are also connected with copper, which produces a decent amount of heat and limits performance. And a lot of it can be replaced with photonics instead. And the first step of this, we're already seeing. This is an SFP plus port or a small form factor pluggable on a NAS or network attached storage. And it is essentially the fiber optic equivalent of an ethernet port, which uses copper wires normally. And so the SFP plus port takes fiber optic signals and converts the photonic signal into an electronics one for the machine to understand. And this provides speed as you'd expect, but also super low latency and less power consumption. So we can already go from the photonics powered internet that we'll eventually have all the way into the end device, whether it's a computer or a storage device, 
whatever. But as soon as 2025, according to NTT, in a phase of ION called 2.0, we'll have optical inner board connectivity. As in that SFP plus port connection or something similar will be a part of the motherboard, allowing for one less conversion to happen between the fiber optic network and the electronic data inside the computer. Then in ION 3.0, the next phase, obviously, we'll see optical inner chip connectivity. So that means that all the copper wires you see lining the motherboard of your computer that connect the CPU with the GPU and the network device and everything else can all be replaced with photonics instead in the form of short range optical wiring. This means that the data moving within the computer can become faster, have lower latency, and again, lower power consumption. Then in the final phase of ION 4.0, the next step is to actually replace the transistors in the chip itself or optical intra-chip connections, they call it. So the usual logic gate transistors that we have right now that are what we use to make calculations always have a time delay, even if it's very small, from when the input is applied versus the output responding. These will be replaced with optical pass gates that instead can give results instantaneously and again with much less power consumption. NTT actually is already evaluating these optical pass gates, albeit with a very small number of bits, but it's on its way. Okay, besides the insane computing power and speeds, there's something really interesting that happens when we have an all photonics network from the network all the way down to the chip level. It's what NTT calls photonic disaggregated computing. So imagine instead of the usual servers in a building comprised of their network interface cards, CPUs and memory, storage, GPU, etc., all connected via PCIe inside the server. And then each server connected to one another via an ethernet LAN of some sort, and they're all working on the same workload like they do. Instead of that, we now have an optical interconnect with optical interfaces, as well as optical interchip connections, connecting all of those components to the optical interfaces. Well, we can actually actually then move the components out of individual servers and have the CPU and memory in one place, the storage in another, the GPU in yet another, etc. And because of the speed and latency of all this optical connections between them, they can all run as if they're all connected together on the same board. And so long as we keep that optical connection between them, they don't even have to be in the same building. They could be on the other sides of the planet and it would still work. NTT actually expects this to mean a hundred times better power efficiency, 125 times better transmission capability, and a 200 times lower latency. And they're already on on track to make all of this doable by 2030. And if you're thinking, oh, how can one company do all of that? Well, they can't. But the ION Global Forum, the group all signed up to help achieve this initiative, has already passed 100 members of some of the most innovative companies, research groups, and academic institutions, and growing. And I, for one, can't wait. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Also, if you want to learn more about what NTT is doing with ION and some of the use cases, which are actually really interesting, you can check them out at the link below. And the sun is about to set and it's going to get cold when that happens. So I'm gonna head inside. Good night, everybody. As soon as I record, there's a motorcycle idling outside the studio. An idling motorcycle will always lead to an accelerating motorcycle. Physics. Another motorcycle. Motorcycle. Truck. Car. Horn. People talking. Scooter. Pretty sure I'll see her plane now. I've made a mistake.